I started the Samuel Plays Brass YouTube channel in August of 2016, now well over half a decade ago. What I never could have seen coming is that my most popular video would be uploaded just months after starting, and that years later it would still be somewhat of a curse upon my channel. Today, we do it all over again. Hey there everybody, it's your host Sam from the Samuel Plays Brass channel. I hope you're all doing well today. On January 1st of 2017, Samuel Plays Brass history was forever made. 14-year-old Sam uploaded a video discussing this instrument, the Vincent Bach Artisan AP-190 Piccolo Trumpet. Now, five years, no outfit changes, and one missing hairline later, here we are again. Stay tuned to learn more about this awesome instrument. The AP-190 was my very first foray into the world of piccolo trumpeting, save for a few notes on my instructor's Selmer piccolo trumpet, and without a doubt, both to me and in general, this is a very, very special horn. During its production, it's been climbing the ranks as a modern-day industry standard, right up there with the Schilke P54, which is a very popular choice. And many professional artists are starting to gravitate towards the artisan for its high playability standards. It's a very, very high-octane horn, and I'm lucky to be able to play on one, and it's got a lot of special features that differentiate it in the piccolo trumpet world. This particular instance of the Artisan is in clear lacquer finish. Bach also offers the AP-190S, which is the same instrument, just in silver plate. But I personally really like the clear lacquer version. I'm quite partial to it because of this beautiful two-tone finish we've got going on here. There is a two-piece valve block on this instrument. The bottoms are yellow brass, as you might expect. But we also have these nickel silver balusters. We also see the nickel color on the slide tubes and what we call these enhanced radius ferrules. These are some special artisan features, Model 190 features versus standard Stradivarius, which are Model 180. And this whole artisan style, especially the clear lacquer version here, is sort of a harkening back to the Bach Mount Vernon days. Although this instrument is constructed in the modern Elkhart factory, these instruments are sort of meant to replicate what we saw in the Mount Vernon era. Those trumpets are some of the absolute most sought after on the market, and in my opinion, some of the prettiest ever made, so I consider this basically the prettiest piccolo trumpet I've ever seen. The bell on it is a hand-hammered one-piece yellow brass bell, lead pipe also yellow brass, and the bell in particular has some very, very special engraving on it. It's got the Artisan Stradivarius logo with a little craftsman, and the Vincent Bach logo underneath, and some very pretty and ornate leaf patterning throughout, so I don't know how well they'll show up in a photo because it's honestly hard enough to see in person. It's just that precise and that tiny, but honestly, the whole package is just a superb one. The AP-190's four piston valves are all Monel coated and very, very durable and smooth. I admit, because I don't play this instrument as much as some of my others, I tend to neglect the valves a bit, and somehow they all still work very quickly when I take it out of the box, even after not oiling for quite a while. They come stock with brass valve guides, though you can switch them out for plastic ones that are included in the kit. The instrument comes with four tunable mouth pipes, or shanks, two for the key of B-flat, the shorter ones, and two for the key of A, the longer ones. These two will accommodate a standard trumpet shank mouthpiece, and these two are for a cornet shank mouthpiece. In terms of some more technical specifications, the bore size of this instrument, which we can measure at theoretically any of the valve slides, is 0.450 inches, or a 450 bore, as Bach will refer to it. Most of their B-flats are equipped by default with a 459 bore, which is a little bit more spacious, and most of their C's, in fact, with a 462 bore, but you expect piccolo trumpets to be a little bit more compact in any case. There's not a whole lot of tubing or room for expansion between the mouth pipe and the valve section, so can't possibly expand too much, but 450 is still a pretty decent size compared to some piccolo trumpets. There are some that get much smaller than that, and ironically, 450 is actually still a larger bore than my 444, medium bore Yamaha 8310Z, which was designed for Bobby Shu. So it's, it might seem small to some users, but actually it's a fairly spacious instrument. The bell on this is four inches in diameter, and what you'll notice about it is it's quite a large flare. Although it's got a very small bell throat, 
This is a little bit different from some vintage piccolo trumpets, which will have a really small bell, but a fairly generous throat compared to this one. And it changes the sound a little bit, I'd say. I'd make it, it makes the sound a little bit more direct and pointed and gives a little bit more projection. Uh, there's a lot of resonance coming off that big bell, which is nice. And, you know, it's overall a very free-blowing and open instrument considering what it's supposed to be, which is half the size of a B-flat trumpet. The AP190 comes equipped with a really beautiful Bach hard shell case. It's got the Artisan logo out front and lots of gold trim and fanciness out here. It's also got these old suitcase style latches that were the butt end of one of probably the funnier Samuel Plays Brass one-liners. The latches, you open them like this, they do bite for anyone who may be wondering. Unfortunately, one of these latches has gone limp over time. There was a comment that prophesied that on the original video and unfortunately they were exactly right. This one still maintains some of its original bite, but I do have to be careful when popping them open to sort of, you know, keep them pushed down a little bit. Not that one, though. In a little over five years of ownership, I've had no lasting gripes about the Artisan. I say lasting because shortly after getting the instrument, this water key actually came unsoldered and flew off across the room. Um, unfortunately, not only was the spring impractically tight, but that solder joint was very, very weak. No matter how long I leave this thing in the case for, when I pick it back up, the mechanical parts are all very smooth. I mean, it's only really ever me who holds back the instrument, not vice versa. This third slide here, which is adjustable via this ring, Confession time, it's fallen on the floor a couple times, but it still works beautifully. Um, if anything, I'd say that's a testament to the fact that it needs some form of retention rod there, but, you know, you take what you can get. There's nothing stopping it from just coming out, but like I said, it's a miracle. It still works smoothly. The fourth valve slide has a lot of adjustability on it, depending on where you want to set the pitch of it. I try and keep it nice and smooth, and, you know, in general, the Bach mechanics of their instruments are, are usually pretty strong. Nothing too bad there. In this short demonstration, I'll illustrate two possible grips you can employ while playing the Artisan, because while I prefer to have all four fingers of the right hand engaged, there are many players who prefer to reach their left index finger over, kind of almost like they're playing a compensating euphonium. As you can see, both are easily possible on the Artisan. This particular instrument, I think, kind of facilitates the pinky grip because this fourth valve is tilted towards the right hand, but provided that your index finger is long enough, this works just fine. The reason I prefer the four finger grip is so I still have easy access to the third valve tuning. Let's talk intonation, as that's a very natural failing point for many piccolo trumpets. On the Artisan, the intonation is fairly consistent regardless of which uh, tuning pipe you're using. It's quite nice across the board. The low notes don't sit too flat, which is nice. That can happen on some very cylindrical instruments, but in this case, the low notes are up to pitch. The fourth valve notes are fairly easy to tune. Honestly, the intonation, like I said, is very consistent across the board. Uh, middle G, middle C, and high G do tend to ride sharp, as does this fingering combination. These are all things that you kind of come to expect on piccolo trumpets. What I like about the intonation on this horn is that the E partial doesn't sit too flat. It's pretty much right where it needs to be. Um, in fact, it can be a little bit sharp if you play too tensely, so you don't have to worry about lifting it up too much, which is nice. There isn't a huge gap between fourth space E and fifth line F in terms of written pitches if we're talking about. So that's definitely a strong point for things like Baroque music where you're constantly using the written F scale. On the A side, if you put one of the A lead pipes in, you will want your first slide out to about there, which is a fair amount of pull considering, you know, a little more and the first slide will fall off. But if you keep it there, you shouldn't have too many problems. Even the one and two fingering combination should pretty much be where it needs to be. The third slide you might consider pulling out to there. Uh, the fourth slide is sort of a touchy subject, but if you have it about there for your B flat side, you might want it there-ish for your A side. 
And overall, once you've got all the slides set correctly and you're approaching the instrument as you should, the intonation is really something miraculous. One of the artisan's greatest strengths, now that I mentioned tuning pipes, is its ability to play evenly across all four. A lot of piccolo trumpets either don't come with all four configurations, or they have very strong preferences as to which pipe exactly they want you to use. For instance, a lot of piccolo trumpets only like to play in the key of A. They're optimized for the key of A, they play fine like that, and then you take that pipe out and replace it with a shorter one, they get very squirrely and they have bad intonation and slotting. That's definitely not the case for the Artisan, it's kind of optimized in between so you could do either. The B flat side is really nimble and its intonation doesn't suffer terribly much compared to the A side. There might be, I don't know, 5% better intonation on the A side than the B flat side, but that's a much less of a discrepancy than some brands. And in terms of cornet and trumpet shanks, I have a general preference towards cornet shanks, but the Artisan pretty much lets you do whatever you want it to do. It's not, it doesn't really have a huge preference either way. You can use trumpet shank mouthpieces and do just fine. The one thing about cornet shanks on this instrument is that they're a little bit wider tapered than some cornet receivers. And so my Stork 3P cornet mouthpiece actually gets a little bit loose in the A pipe. And that means I have to wrap some tape around the bottom, which definitely isn't optimal, but the fact of the matter is, it still plays pretty well, so I guess who can complain? The bottom line here, regardless of which pipe you're using, is that the Artisan is a very free-blowing instrument. Piccolo trumpets won't necessarily make the high register any easier for you. In fact, I'd venture to guess I'm a little bit better at high notes on the lower, the B-flat trumpet, than the piccolo, but... You know, as long as you're approaching the piccolo right, it'll give you a certain brilliance in the higher register, and the Artisan is very much the case here. The low notes are nice and fat and vibrant, they're not too restrictive or cut off completely as long as you're using the right mouthpiece for you. And the high register is really, really open, right up to high written G. Although that one sails sharp, it's quite easy to hit, and the slot on it's fairly forgiving. After that, I'd say the notes are honestly about as open as you can expect them to be. High A's, for the sake of the Brandenburg and high B flats, actually work decently well. The high C isn't too bad, I don't really, I, I'm not brave enough to try anything much higher than that, but you know, those notes all slot as, as far as you need them to. Like I said, it's not necessarily easier than on any other key of trumpet, but honestly, I've played piccolo trumpets that really stuff up on you up there, and the Artisan, as far as things go, is probably one of the better ones in that regard. The aspect of playing where you really see this free blowingness manifested is in the slurs. The slurs between notes on this instrument are really, really exceptional. Consider two ends of the spectrum. First of all, you have trumpets that oscillate well between notes but don't really lock into them very well. And then, you have trumpets that lock into each pitch brilliantly but they're so restrictive on each pitch that you can hardly transition between the two. This instrument is a really brilliant blend of both. The slurs are both easy and clean, which is really not something you see a lot, so this is an exceptional instrument in that regard. In terms of tonguing, it can get a little bit overbearing. A general hazard of piccolo trumpet is tonguing too hard and having sort of front-heavy sound on the notes, and that's something you definitely have to watch out for. But if you lay off on the tonguing and you push your air through the slurs a little bit and have a little bit of power behind the air rather than just using more air, then you really get a sweet sound out of this instrument. I think it's got a much wider tonal palette than some especially vintage piccolos that kind of only had one sound to mess with. This one definitely has a lot of subtlety. You can change the tone and just about in any register, every dynamic really speaks clearly on this instrument. And overall, it's a real joy to play in terms of how free blowing it is and how many different sounds it can produce. Much of the piccolo trumpet's use is in the Baroque sphere. We look for a couple of specific things in that regard. First, we look for a sort of a clarion-like sound quality, and indeed this trumpet, without sounding too shrill, can actually sit atop an ensemble nicely and provide a unique sound color. We also look for ornamentation and the ease of. This instrument is really, really fun to ornamentate on. Anytime I'm playing anything on the piccolo trumpet, I find myself adding in extra trills and ornaments just because it works really, really well. I can, you know, add in little double-tongued runs and all the Baroque pieces, and it's just a lot of fun. It's just 
nice and easy as long as you lay back. The trills are super open. There's no real change in feel in the instrument depending on which valve you're pressing. It's all very even and free blowing and just in general, like I keep saying, a lot of fun to ornament on. I've played the Artisan in a variety of other musical settings, including full orchestra, admittedly years ago, um, some church settings, also solo with piano, and in a couple of various sized brass ensembles, and it really fits in like a chameleon pretty much wherever. It can imitate a more woodwind-like sound, it can complement vocals really well, or it can fit right in with the rest of the brass. Uh, I've played this in a full brass section, very full considering how many brass players my school's wind ensemble has. I think it really adds a special tonal adjustment to any brass ensemble. I played it in a quartet setting and it did just fine there. Uh, it really, like I said, fits in anywhere and is a lot of fun to apply to any musical setting. All in all, if this is an investment you're willing to take the plunge on, the Bach Artisan is such a rewarding instrument. It is fun and gratifying in every sense of the word, no matter the musical setting or the age or type of player. It's great for college students, high school students, the most seasoned professionals out there. Some of them are using this very instrument and doing just great on it. So I think it's a really, really worthy investment for anyone really looking to up their piccolo game. It's such a privilege to be able to play on this instrument and to have had it over the last five years and to sort of learn, grow with it a little bit and maybe fill its shoes a little bit better than I did that first year. In any case, I hope you've learned something from this review, more so than the one I put out five years ago. I'm curious to know if anyone's still around from that era. Um, if anyone's still around to see, you know, 14-year-old Sam firsthand, let me know in the comments. It's been quite the journey and I've really enjoyed rehashing some old memories and hopefully making some good new ones. I'm really excited to dive into 2022 with you all and explore some bigger and better content. Of course, as always, your help means the world to me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. It keeps me making, as I said, bigger and better content, and it'll really pave the way into the new year. I'm really hoping to hit 5,000 subscribers soon, and with your help, we can make it there. Again, if you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking around. You can check out more instrument reviews in the playlist up in the top right corner in the card. Until next time, thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you on the flip side.